So, <coughs> well, <laughs> so today I'm gonna be talking about hard, yeah, hardships. It's probably be a part two to my pain video that I did a couple of years ago. Now, by the way, don't mind me. Sometimes in between, I'll be eating some fruit. And also, can't really get a good angle where it's not just bright in the camera, you know. I don't mind it, but I mean, for the camera, but to start, I mean, I guess this is on theme. It'd be kind of weird. This has happened throughout, since pretty much a little bit after I started, well, around the time I started making videos, a little bit after. And... It was probably more extreme back then. If you watch like my video on fractals and my video on mysticism and stuff, it's crazy because the video was fine, but every time I, when, whenever I posted it, it just, if you go watch the videos, you'll see like it's so hard to hear and I don't even know what that is. It's like some weird interference, but um, just like weird stuff always be happening usually I don't go into it but it's just like crazily weird stuff like I, even in the mysticism video I think it was um, yeah either the fractal or mysticism video one I think it was the mysticism one I had a long description I was typing out and every time I get near finishing typing it out it would just start backspacing one letter at a time <laughs> in the description. Just like weird stuff like that. It took like four times to upload both of those videos. It would be like four hour waits for each time for each video to upload. Even though it usually takes like an hour at the most. Maybe and some videos just take like five minutes, ten minutes. Just weird stuff like that. And I've noticed too, when I record a video, so what I'll do is I'll try and I use different phones, different cameras. Um different computers to upload like a bunch of different like I've tried a bunch of different stuff and like I'll record on this channel then I'll record on my other channel <laughs> and I'll post and the videos on my other channel are clear and they're fine but on this channel like the videos are fine the quality is fine I like pop I like end the video I'll go back I'll watch the video I'll see that the sound is fine the video is fine whatever and then lately now, when I upload on w from this phone too, it's just like distorted audio, distorted video. It's weird. It's really weird. This is not a bad phone, so I don't really get out. Um, you know, without trying to go into other lanes of what that is. I mean, I feel like we all be knowing what that type of stuff is, but yeah, so. When it comes to hardships, and that's just like, not really, it's not really much of a hardship, that's just kind of annoying interference, but when it comes to hardships, right? So watch my pain part one video if you haven't seen that, because it's gonna be tied to that. Um, it's tied to a few other videos too, but anyways, when it comes to hardships, people, a lot of times, people don't know how to take losses people don't know how to take losses and I think a lot of times that deals with perspective so in my last video um, the operating out of your own mind one um, are, are operating within your own mind I need to make sure I titled that within your own mind instead of out of your mind. <laughs> but uh, in that video, I talked about how should I put this?
um, I talked about how we learned something that went along the lines of cheaters often win and stuff like that and I think that was more a perspective thing the way that they're putting it out because if you look at it on a practical level that might be true to an extent but if you look at it on a spiritual level too I don't think it's really true because I mean if I win a medal right like a gold medal and then I get, get disgraced later on and I still lose the medal anyways and then they award it to whatever whoever else I mean in a sense like yeah the person might have made tons of money um, because they got all these deals throughout their life they got all these sponsorships they got all these brand deals and all that whatever but they still lost in the end you know what I mean they might have been able to supposedly to enjoy all these different things throughout life but I don't really think they get to enjoy it that much because there's an aspect of um, killing yourself in a sense to even get those things for example people who kind of sell if just for simplicity sake people who like sell their soul to whatever extent to get you know things that they need to, that they want to get they're not really the ones who get to... They don't really get to enjoy the things that they have. And there's so many reasons for that. Because a lot of times when you get something that you don't feel like you deserve... This B. I'm just trying to see what this B is doing, but... Oh, it wants to land on me. Oh, okay. Never mind. <laughs> I was going to try to lift it up onto the camera, but didn't want me to lift it up but anyways um when you when you get something that you don't really deserve a lot of times people don't really care to keep it this would be like a spoiled child getting things from their family or parents or whatever and they don't really value it but then the person who actually made those things themselves they value it to a different level or a person who A lot of times when they get something, they don't really want it anymore. That type of thing. And that deals with a... Kind of like this... There's like a superficiality or like a lack of... Um, valuing... What you... It's like a lack of valuing your own stuff, but you, you more wanted it because someone else had it. It's kind of Scorpio versus Taurus energy to an extent if you want to look at it astrologically, but um, it's more just like the intention of why you wanted something. It's like you wanted it because someone else had it or because of, like, it, it's not because it actually serves a certain purpose to you and then you treat it pretty much as well as you treat, like, yourself to an extent. And when people are operating out of that way, it can make someone, like I said, do whatever it takes to win in the last video, do like do whatever it takes to win. Um, and they might win at that moment, but spiritually, they're not moving forward. It actually puts them backwards. They end up at a place in life where like they're at the totality of it. They usually are unhappy or miserable or, you know, like different things. They didn't really deal with whatever trauma or pain or whatever thing that actually made them act the way they acted. And um, on top of that, on top of that, um, they didn't really care for the thing that they, that they, that they got. They didn't really care about it that much because once they got that title or once they got that whatever they stopped excelling you know it was more so that because they they wanted to be at the top or whatever it was because they wanted to be seen like they were on the top and once they were at the top they didn't 
they didn't have any need for whatever they were doing. They could have been the best at whatever in the world, the best at whatever. But once they became that best in comparison to everyone else, there was no desire to keep pushing forward. However, if you were doing it for yourself, you would keep going forward. So that kind of that kind of shows you the intentions and the reason behind why they're doing it. So a lot of these people, it's crazy because they know how to overcome things and actually achieve greatness, but at the same time, their hardships haven't even really begun yet. The hardships begin once their body starts wearing down or they start losing the shine or the fame or the attention or they start losing their reason to like kind of live in a sense um that's really when they actually have to face hardship for real for real because it comes like at a time where basically there's nothing left to give an excuse of why they're not facing themselves So I think it's kind of So I think the uh, energy of sports and competition has kind of lost all a lot of its meaning in general. Like people aren't doing it out of the right reasons anymore. And it kind of makes it not even enjoyable to be honest because it's not even for enjoyment anymore. Like the only enjoyment people are getting is basically dominating another person. And that's really the main source. And I've seen this throughout playing all, pretty much almost every sport my whole life, uh, watching, seeing different, not even just from sports, but people compete in every field of life, right? And I feel like that inauthenticity now to the actual true intention of why they're doing the craft that they're doing. I feel like that is lost for the most part. Like for the most part it's lost. And I feel like a lot of the times people who are doing it for the right reasons are not in the leagues that are they're not, they're not really competing with other people, so they don't really put themselves out there in a league to fight with other people or compete with other people. Like, they're doing it so that... They're doing it for themselves, but... It's not... Since they're not really doing it to prove a point to everybody else, you don't see them out there trying to compete with everybody else. Like, they're more underground, if that makes sense. not easy to be tempered with fruit. It's not easy at all to be tempered with fruit. <laughs> um, now, perspective-wise, right? So perspective-wise, I think this is kind of where it goes into the well, cheaters often win thing. I don't think they usually win because most of the time, if you see the way they die or the way they live after um, they're done doing whatever they're doing or after they've been humiliated for you know, being caught, whatever they're doing, just the way that things end for them is not really... It shows you that it shows you the actual intention the aim or the goal like because that's the actual target or the goal that they've reached <laughs> you know what I mean there's an end there is an end that um, all the smoke and mirrors and all the cameras and stuff didn't really
didn't really put as the reality from the jump because when you're seeing all that stuff happening at the end it's a culmination of a bunch of shit just like uh, that's cluttered up in like the closet just kind of overflowing out it's more so all this stuff was happening the whole time the whole time through but people weren't really per- people weren't really portraying it in media and all this type of stuff so people were making it look like one way and this is trickled down to almost everybody that you see on social media and who is trying to um, just push themselves out usually through social media for the most part everyone really cares about how they look and not what's actually behind the scenes like it's a uh, it's superficially real it's like made in China or something like it's pretty fake for the most part it's that Venus illusion but a Venus moon illusion at least so I've explained that in a different video you can go you know basically the way I describe it is kind of that made in China how it's like it looks good but usually it, it, it craps out on you type thing that's kind of like I relate Asia heavily with Venus and yeah I, I look at that as the Venus moon illusion how people are operating in society it's that made in China energy that Venus uh, moon illusion energy where the way people make it on the surface level and even if they go kind of deep with it that's really not what it is on the deepest deepest levels it's um it's missing something and that's because it's basically like a pinata or something I don't know it's like a like a Venus flytrap it's like a pinata you you hit that thing and all the candy comes out and that shit just like you get all excited and all that type of stuff I don't know as a child or whatever if you did but and then you end up with cavities or something, you know what I mean? The candy looks good. You eat a you eat a bunch of candy, it looks good, it tastes good. It's not quite it's not quite fruit. It's tricking your subconscious mind. So when it comes to hardships, well first of all perspective perspective. Like I said with <clears throat> with the whole cheaters often win thing I think it's really just a perspective thing I think it's like yeah they might win at that moment but I don't think they actually like win you know they and I don't even really think they win at that moment it's like the type of thing where something is always happening as they're trying to get their win something is always it's like Something is always, like, in their mind trying to stop them. Something's always against them. Something is always trying to stop them from reaching whatever they're trying to reach. And they have to have this do or die or, you know, like, that type of attitude. And I think you're going against the flow of things. I think that's the reason why I think you're going against the flow. So this is why I say people don't know how to take a loss. And people don't even have the right perspective of what a loss is. For example, the way I, actually before I even get into that, a loss, right? Let's talk about what a loss isn't first of all. Okay, a loss, right? To lose something doesn't mean I had this thing, I had this phone and then I lost it and I lost like that's not what a loss is just because you have something and you don't have it anymore doesn't mean you lost it it means you don't have it anymore it's not under your possession anymore it's not under your control you didn't lose it things have a purpose and everything has a reason. There's a reason for everything. Whether you want to believe that or not, that's how that's how it is, you know. That's how that fly trying to get on the food. 
that's how it is <laughs> and that, at least that's how I see it but that to me that's how it is everything has a reason and when people want to use their ego I don't really want to say ego but because everyone kind of just puts everything on the ego put it on the shadow <laughs> and everyone wants to because it's more actually on the shadow um, but when people want to not accept something for what it is like there's times for that and I'll get into that but when people want to accept something for or they don't want to accept something for what it is and they try to create an illusion or whatever to make themselves appear as not what it is anymore then to me that person's operating as a loser you know and when they're operating as a loser they're not able so that they're 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 operating in that losing energy so they might think they lost something and instead of trying to let go of whatever is now moved on because they didn't lose anything it wasn't under your possession or control anyways energy is always moving it's not this type of a lot of this stuff you don't own these things it's a material like you don't own these things when it's passed through your space now whatever it is it's time to move on you don't you don't sit in school <laughs> whatever age you're in school you don't sit in school and then when the class is over you're like I lost the class I have to sit here and because I don't want class to ever end <laughs> You don't you don't do that you might do that at like recess or something you're like oh I don't want to recess to like I don't want to go back to class right and you think you're losing your time but things move on even if you're immortal like time still functions you just might function differently in time but like things move keep moving now unless you're in a state of absolute zero and nothing's moving which I really doubt it but um, I even really doubt it, obviously not, but still, things move on. So when people say, I lost this, or I missed this opportunity, or et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, not really. Like, that's not. Everything comes full circle. Everything comes full circle, and it comes back to you. So if it's right here, and then you said you missed it here. It comes full circle and you'll have that opportunity again. That's just how it works. You might just be impatient or you might, it's just it might be the wrong perspective on it. And on top of that, if you have an item, ooh, like you have the phone or whatever, and you have it here, and all of a sudden you don't have the phone anymore, when it comes full circle, you'll probably have a new phone. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, you didn't lose the phone. You're like, oh, well, I had all these photos and videos and all this stuff on the phone. I lost it. And it's like, well, the energy was probably becoming stagnant or stale. And you're holding on to stuff that now does probably not serve a purpose anymore. So it was time for you to let go. You got a bunch of signs. It was time for you to let go. You didn't let go. Now something happened to force you to let go of it. And then in your mind, you're still not letting go of it. <laughs> so then by the time you get that new thing... You're not even enjoying it anymore because you're still thinking about the thing that you lost. Ooh. I was in a relationship with this person and now when I'm with this person I have to talk about my ex all the time or I have to put all the stuff that happened for my ex onto you or uh, da 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 da. It's like. <laughs> it's like. It's like a wind hitting. You know what I mean? It's like you're just getting hit by all that. relax let go of shit learn the lesson and then just move on let go of shit and like we all have to do this in some kind of capacity but um but yeah some people are not even aware of this pretty much um some people are not aware of it enough to consciously be doing this on a scale where it keeps them flowing and moving through life uh, consistently in a more fast-paced way.
or in a not really fast paced, but in a more um, in a more like synchronized with like time at least at least synchronized with time or moving faster. So, man, fruit, fruit be too fire, holy. <laughs> um, so, when it comes down to it, when you're in a, if you're in a game, you're playing a video game, or you're playing a sport, or you're, I don't know, racing someone, whatever it is, you're just competing with someone in any kind of way. If you lose the game, and that's why English and duality and binary and like it's this or that not really well kind of binary but this or that the duality aspect it can be kind of dangerous because it, how it warps the mind and frames the mind and stuff like that if you lose at something that does not mean you lose it's like a perspective thing if you have a child and you're taking care of this child and this baby pukes on your shoulder or something <laughs> you know what I mean? Just pukes on you or whatever. Did you lose? Did the baby one up you or something? Like you can just probably wash the shirt to be honest, but I mean did you did you lose? No. Like and a lot of times <laughs> like obviously for guys it'll be a lot harder to deal with a lot of times, but not all the time. But you'll a lot of times you'll see like a mom or you know what I mean? or a babysitter or whatever, more so moms, but when they have like the baby and it pukes on them, they're not even like stressed about it. It's got all this puke on their shoulders. <laughs> they're not even stressed about it. They're just like, like it doesn't even look like it phases them. I saw someone the other day like that. I was so out somewhere and it just had puke all over her shoulder, but she had a baby right there and I was looking at the baby's, or was it was a food coming out of the baby's mouth. I don't know if it's food or if it's puke, whatever it was, but it kind of looked the same. <laughs> um, she was like, no, I, like she knew it was there, but like, I, it was like she didn't even know it was there so to me I looked at it like okay well <laughs> that's pretty interesting because um, it was a pretty public place but anyways I was like oh, okay well so that's an example of like the perspective that she had it was just a necessary thing that needed to happen like it was just necessary she didn't look at it like she didn't look at it like Damn, flies always trying to come around fruit and stuff like that. Um, in fact, they adapted and created fruit flies out here just to deal with fruit. That'd be wild as hell, but she didn't look at it as like a loss. You know, I'm not really, I mean, <laughs> I ain't saying that's going to be me. <laughs> Definitely not. Uh, I don't know how I'd deal with that if I had to deal with that even, but um, but yeah, she didn't look at that as like a loss or anything like that. That was just necessary. It was just necessary to happen. You know what I mean? It was just necessary to happen. It was a cycle of life. She probably did that as a baby. And then when that baby grows up, they'll probably have a baby that does it to her or to him or whatever. If it was a guy or a girl, I don't know. But you know what I mean? Or a boy or girl. But um, yeah. So that's it's just like a cycle. And not just because, oh, it happened to me, it happens to them. Like, it's not that kind of, it's not even just that. It's, it can it can be that, but it's just a fact of, like, like, that's what ha needed to happen. Like, the baby just needed to let food trip out of its mouth or whatever it was, you know? It was not really like, oh, I'm losing something. Like, worst case scenario, people were preparing to have, like, a towel there or something, you know what I'm saying? So... That's that's the thing. So, <laughs> and that example might be a little bit too uh, humble for some people, but let's talk about. Actually, before I get to that, still. So, when it comes to what a loss isn't, a loss isn't. 
a loss isn't when something is out of your possession now or something is out of your control you know like the baby on her that's kind of out of her control what she can control is putting a towel there or how she sees the the baby's gonna have to eat and the baby's gonna do that so it's like it's not about what's in your control or what's in your possession losing isn't about that so if you're playing a video game or you're playing a sport with someone or whatever and then you so-called lose did you really lose did you really lose it might be this kid might you might be playing basketball with someone and he always beats you you know what i'm saying he's always beating you he's always beating you but then like five years later, 10 years later, whatever, however, depending on how old they are, that you now might be in a league or something. You know what I'm saying? Like you might be at a higher level than the other, than another child or whoever they are. And then that person isn't even playing anymore. They're doing something else. But if you were to play them then, you would obviously destroy them. Like it's not in the totality of it. Did you really lose? Like it's, they're lessons you know what I'm saying it's usually a lesson so sometimes you hold on to things and energy becomes too stagnant and so on and so forth and you don't know how to let it go sometimes you're doing something that is ahead of you so for example if you're in class right let's go back to class here and you have a teacher and the teacher is trying to tell you something and not some stupid shit I mean like they're just trying to tell you something like that you just don't know about um or I'm not saying you should really accept the shit that they teach you or, you know, not any of that, but I'm trying to use an example, like, you could have someone try to give you advice on something, anything. It doesn't even have to be in school, but, um, like a coach or, I don't know, any, like, um, anyone trying to give you some kind of advice on something, right? If they're just, if they just know how to do something that you haven't necessarily done yet, and they're just like, okay, well, this is how I do it. This is how you. This is how you do it. Like, this is how I do it. Try it, right? Are you really like you're not losing because they have more experience than you, or they might be in a position where they're better adapted to do whatever that thing is, and you're not able to do at that moment? It's just like a. <clears throat> it's just like a time thing. It's just like a time thing. It means someone is either. Someone is just. Someone has, like, basically walked a path that you haven't necessarily walked yet, and they're able to tell you, hey, this is how I got from here to here. You don't necessarily have to do it the same way as me, but this is how I got from here to here. And that can come in the form of someone beating you at a sport, someone beating you at a video game, whatever. They know how to, they might be able to win, and they might show you how they did it, and them showing you how they did it is by how they beat you. So... That's just like, <laughs> that's just like um, having someone that's younger than you, and then the younger person's trying to act like, oh, like you know what I'm saying? Like the younger person's trying to act like the older person. Um, and I don't even mean physical. At this point, it doesn't even have to be physical age. It's more so experience at this point, because younger people could have more experience than older people in certain things. But a younger person could be looking at someone who's older and be like, oh, well, um, just react to how whatever they say badly. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, you can listen to people <laughs> and just not take their advice. <laughs> That's the thing. You can just not take their advice if it's some bullshit. So then when you learn about whatever that is when you go through that cycle you'll learn if it was bullshit or if it wasn't and then you also have in your mind if they told you hey there's like a log here that you're going to trip on that you or they need to watch out for it so you don't trip on it when you get to that spot if you see the log you can have it in the back of your mind like oh this person told me there's a log here just step over it <laughs> you know what I'm saying maybe it's dark you can't see it I don't know so what I'm getting at is just because someone can tells you something that you don't know just because and it can be a younger person to an older person if the younger person knows something the adult doesn't know clearly that adult does not know how to learn things <laughs> um, 
<laughs> Clearly, but um, if a younger person or listen to people, and I don't mean obey what a person has to say, I just mean like listen to what they're trying to say. So it could be you don't know um, someone's trying to tell you something or give you advice on something or just give you like a message. It could be someone is trying to, and, and that could be advisory, it could be in so many different ways. Um, it could be someone beats you, beats you in a game or whatever. It could be um, stale energy or stagnant energy that, stagnant energy or something that doesn't, um, that necessarily hasn't been released, right? All of those things are not losses. So that's like energy that's just kind of being trapped up and it's doing everything it can to be released and put being put into a new situation where it is best suited to be. A loss is not what people think. Like people don't know how to... So I had to say it that way at the beginning of the video, but now let me phrase it. It's not only that people don't know how to take losses, People have the wrong perspective in general just on what a loss even is. Now what I would say a loss really is, is for example, see, there almost isn't any kind of loss, like, let's say about, let's say you have a person who won a gold medal and they cheated, and then the other person got cheated out of it and they should have won it and they actually put in the work, right? Now, the only time there would be a loss in that situation is, like, in totality, not just in little moments, like, in totality, is if that person who lost, like, who came in second place in the race, if they didn't learn, like, they probably knew the other person cheated or something, but even if they knew it or didn't know it, if they, if they, um, if they didn't, if they reacted in a way where they just didn't let it go, and then got better from it. And not just got better from it, but they either got better at what they were doing or they moved on and used whatever they learned and did something else. And they moved on to whatever was next for them. Either way, but if it stopped them, like if the loss made them, for example, do something else, like if they came in second place and because of that, now it changed their whole life, right? That would be a loss to an extent. Like to an extent where like, they're like, oh, they, they get into the loser mentality where they're like, oh, um, and they get all down and stuff and they don't actually keep moving forward. That would be kind of a loss. Or, because like, let's say if they won the race or if they didn't lose the race. If after that race, either way, they were going to stop racing and they had something else they were going to do, that's not a loss. You know what I'm saying? Like, but if they just stop because of the, because of the, uh, because of the outcome, that would have been a loss. You know what I'm saying? Because let's say like 20 years later now, the person gets um, found out that he was actually cheating and all this stuff and then the person came in first now. Well, if he didn't even really care too much, like care, like he cares but not care too much about the outcome, he probably would have continued doing what he was doing and got better at it and let's say if he won maybe not the next year or the year after or something like that right he started being able to it'd be a person who's being able to beat people who can cheat and on top of that later on it would still get rectified anyways so a loss is really something where you're on a path and you're supposed to continue on that path but somehow you're tricked out of your position like through projection or anything but you're tricked out of your position so you do not continue going in the direction that is best for you because even if you go okay well that wasn't for me and then you do something else ultimately if you have regrets or if it puts you in a position where you're like I sh um, now the way you deal with other things is like it keeps putting you in a position where you're like you accept um, how should I put this it puts you in a position where you always kind of feel like you don't rightfully have what's yours. That's somewhat a loss too. See, there could also be a karmic thing also where that person maybe he, he was in second place or whatever 
and he um, or she was took that loss or whatever and then he went and did other stuff and then he kept so-called failing or you know whatever in life could be a karmic thing as well where that person is learning how to accept losses because maybe in a past life if you want to put it like that they did something like the person who was in first place did so now at this point they have to learn how to accept losses you know what i mean like it could be things like that too so it's not just like um super win loss zero one binary duality black and white type of thing it's like a little it's a little more than just like black and white in that in that sense but but everything happens for a reason so regardless of what's happening energy for the most part because of how the nine universal laws work see when you learn about the seven universal laws the craziest part about it is everyone it puts people what I've, what I've learned is it puts people in a position where there's just a lack of balance between consideration of others and and um and uh, self-centeredness there's like this lack of balance between the two that's what I've noticed when people get into the seven laws and that's what happens when you deal with the number seven a little bit too um, it deals with balance but it deals with <laughs> imbalance um, but when you look at the nine universal laws and there's two more like I said it connects it connects everything together it connects everything together it connects um, it literally just connects everything together. Now, I was not going to be the one to speak on it because it's not really my... Um, it felt like someone else was kind of holding off on it because they wanted to, I don't know, let people figure it out on their own or whatever, and I gave it a lot of time. But I think I should speak on those two, so... Yeah, I'll, I'll bring it... I'll, I'll speak on them, so... There's the seven, you know, seven hermetic laws or whatever, right? But then there's actually nine. You see this in the DC universe, right? You can Google the the nine the nine forces of DC, like the 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 universal forces. Google DC. There's a couple things you can Google. Google DC map of the universe, and it'll bring up some like circular thing. And um, this is just one way to figure it out. Like there's other ways to figure it out, but this is just one way to kind of figure this out so it'll talk about nine forces right now the two forces that it's talking about that is corresponding with the eighth and ninth universal laws is what they call the crisis energy and the anti-crisis energy so this is obviously dealing with the christ and anti-christ but it's just interesting how you think about it because christ or see the crisis energy is dealing with the number eight and it's dealing with how villains in all these stories because of the way that they look at universal law and all that type of stuff, the seven laws and all that. They, the villains are usually creating a crisis, but it's also based off of how they're dealing with the situation, which is how they're dealing with hardship. That's really the difference with heroes and villains. It's just really how they deal with hardships, long story short. Um, and also how um, with MK Ultra and like media and how they're trying to portray, how, how they're trying to like make people act in a certain type of way. So that's also bullshit. So don't even get me started on that. Like the way they portray heroes and villains is also kind of bullshit but um because they just want people to behave a certain type of way so that's also bullshit so don't get me started on that but but first of all um just generally villains will usually create a crisis so they're acting in the crisis energy and heroes usually operate on the anti-crisis energy so the heroes so the villain is usually a lone person or there's a couple of them, but it's usually like one person. But the heroes is usually a group of people. And that group of people working together, and it's not like an organization where it's like, we're an, uh, an official organization where we make plans on how to do this and that. That's like a council of villains. It's not really the same thing. This is more so like the force or, you know, whatever you want to look at it, God, spirituality, like all this, the universe, whatever. 
brings the necessary components together to deviate a crisis, if that makes sense. It's kind of like, it deals with timelines and a bunch of stuff too, but the anti-crisis energy is usually what the heroes operate under. So they avert crises, usually. Um, they kind of work out all the... Uh, They have like enough, they have not, see the heroes and the villains, usually the villains have more power, but the thing is the heroes usually are backed up by the actual, it's like the villains are usually going against the wind and that resistance kind of makes them stronger in a sense on one level and there's more to it than that, like don't get me wrong, but, but the heroes are usually in a sense, subtract all the bullshit part, they're, it's like the wind is pushing them so they, it's like the winds are pushing all these people from different directions together at, at a central at a central point and then they end up working together to avert a crisis usually and sometimes crises are needed but before not even getting into that that is usually why they are able to overcome the villain because the villain is trying to for the most part, they're able. They're trying to take the power for themselves to basically go against everything to reset or create a new system, which could be good or bad. So that's why sometimes it's bullshit. Because sometimes um, the new system that they're probably trying to recreate is probably better, but whatever. Um, but the heroes, a lot of times, the system or the universe or whatever is usually working for them. Now, it can get kind of dangerous because the heroes, if they're working for a corrupt system, which is kind of what Avengers Civil War, and I talked about this in my spiritual warfare videos and stuff, that's kind of what that was about. There was a civil war between the two groups and one was basically saying, well, it's a corrupt system anyways. You know what I mean? It's a corrupt system. And the other group is like, we will uphold the system. If you watch that movie, um, uh, what's it called? Digimon, the X antibody movie I talked about in my spiritual warfare part four video, or the Anunnaki Netaru video. And a little bit of, on my anime channel video of, um, uh, about dragons and stuff it was a pretty good it made a pretty good point the fact that Yggdrasil the tree of life or whatever in um, the Digimon movie how it was corrupt and basically the 13 royal knights were or the 12, 12 of the 13 royal knights were trying to support this corrupt system and then the 13th royal knight who wasn't even a royal knight yet he like learned that he was later in the movie but he was basically trying to tear down the system because the shit was bullshit, you know what I'm saying? Like, it was basically functioning incorrectly. So, this is like Saturn's, the Saturn Cube and all that type of stuff just malfunctioning. This is um, the system malfunctioning. It's like the system has a virus. This is um, the Dark Crystal, how the crystal became, the polarity of the crystal became flipped. So, when Alphamon in the movie, he basically reset the system, he was able to flip the polarity of the system again. But it was through like a self-sacrifice and it was a lot of stuff but but yeah that's kind of where the the villain energy that's one of the main reasons the villain energy is so powerful because the villains actually usually have the power to change the system and then they usually have a full understanding of what has happened and the heroes are usually left in the dark about the entirety of something that's happened and throughout the story they learn about what's happened but um, they don't really make it a lot of them don't really change their decisions and they just keep they just stay based off of what they were sent to do so um which one is good which one's bad i think it just kind of depends on the situation and if the system is good or bad so i think it just kind of depends on that and depending on what is trying to happen so the system in this case would be like the matrix the matrix movie how um yeah that's pretty self-explanatory so the Matrix would be Yggdrasil, or the Tree of Life, slash Tree of Death, and then, um, yeah, so, 
um, in Marvel, it would be a lot of these intelligence agencies that are operating for something as well. So that's a whole, that's a whole thing to get into. But long story short, there's the crisis and the anti-crisis energy. So usually the heroes are operating under the anti-crisis energy, and the villains are operating under the crisis energy. So it's kind of interesting because they say Christ will come back and destroy all this shit, right? That kind of sounds like a villain. It kind of sounds like the crisis energy, <laughs> and then the anti-crisis energy that the heroes are operating under. I mean, I'm pretty sure the SS, like the SS in Germany, or the SS, the super soldiers, or whatever in Mar, whatever they are, they probably all thought they were heroes too. They got all these badges and shit. They probably all thought they were heroes too, averting a crisis that they didn't want. I don't know. By create, who knows? So, crisis, anti-crisis energy. Anti-crisis is dealing with number nine. Crisis is dealing with number eight. So this is dealing with infinity, and you can go into this yourself. So um, that's where you go into the seven hermetic principles, which is dealing with the, the mind and stuff like that. But once, you, once you go into eight and nine, that's actually the nine universal laws, like because the universe is more than just like yeah, the all is mind and all that type of stuff too. But the all. <laughs> Like, there is other things that exist. And you could say, oh, well, nothing exists outside of me. I mean, there are other, like, there are other people. There are other things. <laughs> so we're not just going to have a fight about who has a stronger mind so that we can overpower each other's minds and stuff like that. Like, there is a balance between self-centeredness with, with the all and, and from the macro to the micro, but also you are a micro <laughs> and there is other micro things that exist as well that is also has that same um same if they're not utilizing it at least potential to an extent to relate with the all as well and there's different varyings of potential and all that type of stuff but again potential can be yeah so that's that's another conversation but that still all deals with hardships and how people deal with hardships because if you really look at heroes and villains and all that type of stuff it, it's really all dealing with hardship again and it's all dealing with pain and how a person deals with pain so what a loss isn't isn't really all the stuff people think usually it's allowing things to happen but not because someone else wanted something to happen. Like, if you didn't have... If you have the power to stop something from happening and someone's trying to do something, like, stop it. But if you also are protected and you know you're protected, then at the end of the day, nothing can really harm you. Like, things will always go back and harm the per person who's acting out of pocket. Because if someone's trying to do something to another person and they're not... And they don't have the right reasons of why they're doing it, they they will end up having a whole system going against them. And I'm not talking about the police or like this type of system, the matrix and shit like that. I'm talking about, um, cause there's still the natural aspect of, it's not like 100%, the whole system. It's the, um, how should I put it? Like if you have a virus on your computer, your computer is still for the most part is gonna function. But depending on how serious the virus is, it's not gonna, it's going to affect it in certain types of ways. So, I'll just leave it like that. Like, it's the way the system's corrupt and the way it isn't corrupt. Like, there, it is corrupt, but then there's things that can be, it can still be utilized, if that makes sense. Like, you can turn two negatives into a positive. Like, it, there's still a way that you can utilize it even if it is somewhat corrupt like if your phone or your computer is still kind of if it's like hacked or has a virus or whatever you can still use it and then you can repair it and stuff like that too or just get a new one but depending on how depending on what you can do but but even worst case like you can still use it so the system's corrupt and then someone's hacking your computer but they're trying to view what you're doing and then you do some something um, 
knowing that a person is viewing you. It's almost like a organism system for like poison. You know what I mean? It's like it might know it get it will get bitten, but when you bite it, you're probably gonna get paralyzed or die or something. So it's like antivirus. So it's like crisis and anti-crisis. You know what I'm saying? Hardship. So this is knowing how to deal with a loss. And if you know that losses will inevitably happen, like you're not going to go through life completely not taking a loss in anything, then you're able to utilize the flow for your advantage. 